Hello. <laughs> I, uh... So, I have a confession. I have never played the Stanley Parable. Um, I know it got really popular, you know, a little while ago, but, uh, yeah, I just, I just never got around to playing it. I don't know what it's about, except a guy named Stanley, and it is his parable. I guess. Um, <clears throat> have you played? No, I have not. So yeah, I um, it's it's a famous game, but I I don't know. I've never played it, and I decided, you know, it should be fine. Um. <clears throat> I gotta. Yes. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. It says please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. But like, I kind of want it to be brighter though. <laughs> I don't really know what the point is though. Like games tell you to do this all the time, where it's like, please adjust it so the image is barely noticeable, <laughs> barely visible. And it's like, why would I do that? I kind of I want to see everything. <laughs> Whatever. <clears throat> of course, we don't want to make it too bright, but this should be fine. <clears throat> Please enter the current time. Uh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... Um, okay, don't, just, don't make a scene, don't, <laughs> don't judge me, <laughs> I'm gonna wait one more minute, for a minute. <laughs> don't judge me, okay, <clears throat> I'm playing this, <laughs> almost at one in the morning. This is the time, okay? This is the time for me to play it. I don't have... I didn't have uh, that much time today. This was the time. Okay. Bam, I did it. Accessibility settings can be... Uh, accessed from the main menu. <clears throat> Alright. So yeah, the only thing I know about this game is that it's um kind of a walking simulator kind of thing, but like it's telling a story or a parable, if you will. Uh, and the narrator is really funny. That's what people talk about this game for. Like, that's what one of the famous things about this game is the narrator is really funny. I don't know what the story is, so I'm going into this going into this pretty blind Okay. I don't I don't like that. Uh I mean I kinda do like that, but I mean I'm I'm unsettled. I'm unsettled by that. Um, uh, I'll just, I think I'll just, uh, keep everything like this for now. It should be fine. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never the loading. <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, 
and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed uh -huh. up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete mm. isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Uh. <laughs> does that say, I hate Mondays? <laughs> of course it does. All right. <clears throat> I, uh... Oh, does that say the time? No, right? I think that's off. I don't think that's what I put on there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh my god, everyone has the mug. Everyone in this world is just Garfield. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay, well, that one... <laughs> that one, uh, that's probably the winner. Uh, I guess not all the mugs are the same, but alright. That one was the best one so far. What is this one? Number one, Dad. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> oh, look at that. I can't go back. I don't know. I can't go back to the safety of my office. Wait, what is that? I like... work. I just hate my boss. <laughs> well, it's a little rude, but okay. Not entirely inaccurate. I mean, <laughs> so far this is just super weird, so I don't know. Look, I already the <laughs> I already played a horror game, okay? So like, <laughs> this better not turn out to be <laughs> like a back rooms kind of thing. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, <clears throat> I think stuff happens if you disobey him, but I don't know if I should. Uh, let's just see what happens. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice room. <laughs> a nice, like, lounge area. Yes. 
really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, <laughs> here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Uh, I'd say you could put a, a bit at more furniture point, in Stanley's here. Stan's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected <laughs> poorly on his overall personality. Oh, it's no. possible that this is why everyone left. All right, you don't have to be a jerk about it. All right, I just... <laughs> Uh. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had <laughs> oh, passed no. and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. All right. Um. Also, before uh, I mention the back rooms, I'm pretty sure this came out before that whole trend. Um. I think. <clears throat> But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Yeah, I'll just, uh... I'm not going to deal with his sass right now, okay? So I'm just going to follow his so directions. he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Mm. Dude, this game is tempting me a lot right now to disobey him so i don't know maybe maybe i'll obey his orders for now and then maybe do another playthrough where i just completely break everything <laughs> like just completely go off the, the track that he wants me to i don't know we'll see is this it yet there was not a single person here either feeling a wave of disbelief stanley decided to go up to his boss's office Hoping he might find an answer there. Oh. <clears throat> How to solve a dispute. Oh. <laughs> Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. <laughs> okay. my god this is such a powerpoint presentation like it looks just like it pretty much like with the wavy blue on the top it's just uh it's pretty accurate that's all i'm saying <clears throat> oh that was different <laughs> to do uh, synergize core value expenditures. Shift global market parade. Parade. Par oh, there's a there's a letter hidden behind there, so I don't know. Monetize free to play. That's oh. Okay, so this is uh. What was the company that did that? <coughs> this is like Activision or whatever. I don't know. It's one of those Ubisoft, Activision, just fucking pick. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Wow. I mean, this is a nice hallway. I'm just saying, you know. I'm <laughs> Executive bathroom. Weird. This door does not match at all, no. Uh. <clears throat> this, uh, no. Wait, what the... Why are the doorknobs shaped like that? Why are they... Oh, I think it's just the shadows. I thought they are like, turned in words like that, but... 
I guess it's just the shadows. I don't know. All right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Can I play the piano? <laughs> You're gonna have to repeat that guy. I already, uh... It's already slipped my brain. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. 2845. Where is the computer? Oh. I thought it was a computer. It was just a keypad. 2845. <laughs> Alright. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, oh my God. Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Yeah. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Yes. I am the greatest at <laughs> typing in random numbers in a keypad and winning. Oh. Oh no. Can I fall down there? I don't want to I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Oh no. <laughs> <coughs> um. Oh, come on. I've already <laughs> Listen. I just I just played Soma, okay? I was a <laughs> That's a horror game already. I don't need this. But is this a wall? Okay, it's just a wall. I thought it was I I'm sorry. I guess I have to go down this? Oh. There's a floor here. Well. I couldn't see, okay? I couldn't see. It's too dark. <clears throat> Apply resolution. <clears throat> Is there no, uh... Um... <clears throat> Auto walk. Um, okay. Where's the... Okay, I guess I can't, um... Alright, never mind then. Because I can't adjust the uh, brightness, so we're Descending just going to have to deal with it. The building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Um. All right. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna. <clears throat> I'm just gonna follow him, follow what he wants me to do, and then I don't know, maybe replay it, make different choices possibly, but. For some reason, I feel like I'm uh, walking into a trap. 
So let's go. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? <clears throat> now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. I already forgot which room I was in, so... Like four, seven, something? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably wrong on that. <laughs> Um. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Wow. I mean, this is just real life, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, this is, uh... People working in cubicle desk jobs really makes you think about society. And when at last you know? he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I mean, honestly, yeah, I would. Wait, is that it? Did I do it? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. Again, I and think yet, this is a trap. Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? <clears throat> how had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, 
the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Wow. Is this seriously it? Like, did I just beat the game? <laughs> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. <clears throat> That's insane. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I actually love that. You could just beat the game. <clears throat> If you choose to. I I started the timer. It's like 25 minutes already. Like, I beat the game. <laughs> but, you know. Okay, it's 427. That's why. Is there a camera in here? I don't see it. Jeez. Alright. Anyway, I, I do love that a lot. All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? <clears throat> Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. That's crazy. It's like, yeah, you beat it. But, like, there's still a bunch of unanswered questions, and you gotta... You gotta go against the narrator himself to, in order to, like, figure it out. <clears throat> I love that. I think it's great. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This time I'm going to follow it because I I broke that rule the first time because I didn't I'll go on the left one. Just because I didn't do it the last time. It's just a detour anyway, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it just leaves over here. Yet so yeah, it's good. Not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Well, I solve a dispute with a co worker. <clears throat> well, coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm <clears throat> well, you know what? I'm actually going to go up this way first. I'm going to make some other choices down the line. I want to know what escape means when you're going to go over there. I want to do that first. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. And because because what I'm I'm thinking, um I don't know if Stanley here is uh <clears throat> entirely free. I think you know, of the uh, mind control. Maybe this narrator guy is um manipulating things because he literally told me the password and it's like oh yeah incredibly just by sheer luck he typed in the right code but it's like Amazing. we know he that's not what into happened the newly opened passageway so like i don't know who is this narrator and why is he helping me in the first place you know what i mean I don't know. There's something something weird's going on. And I don't think it's just like a funny uh 
it's not just like a fun fourth wall breaking thing. I think it's it's probably got something to do with the story. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Uh, nope. I'm gonna go this way. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth uh -oh. was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh no. I knew it. This is a secret horror game. That's the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Oh no. <laughs> I just got over the... At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> I hate this already. Oh my god, no. Uh, all right. Okay. The end is never the end. Okay. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. I can't Perhaps this. his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his oh, brief and shallow life. My God. <laughs> this is seriously how it's going to end. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator. As what? Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In what? a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Just a second narrator. Like, what? <laughs> Alright, this is getting real interesting now. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless. Making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? What? I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to do this yet. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> this seems like a like a big. Um. A big reveal of some kind, but I just don't, I don't get it, <laughs> you know? Uh, corridor. The pacing of this open, opening section was important to get right. Corridor has been moved and altered to make the sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. <clears throat> Alright, so we're getting meta here. Whoever created all this created the game Stanley Parable. Sorry, the Stanley Parable. <laughs> Office layout. <clears throat> <clears throat> this blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of... <clears throat> <clears throat> was the first part of the, of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development. Through the core layout remains almost I or though my god. <clears throat> though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. 
Right. So that's Stanley's office. That's my office. You go through here. You're supposed to go through here. Yep, there's the... I wonder why it's not, like, finished. Like, it just ends here with the two pathways here. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to, like, not do this yet. <laughs> uh, okay, button sounds. Selection of the... Of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Well. This one's my favorite. As if you didn't, or uh, <clears throat> as if you needed to know that. Okay, this is just the credits. <laughs> maintenance room, an early version of the maintenance room. So this is just basically the game stuff, the game, like behind the scenes game stuff. Which is insane already. I'm like, I'm so confused. <laughs> and I have no idea if I'm even supposed to be here yet. <clears throat> the apartment timer. Uh, <clears throat> in a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you... 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. I don't even know what that... <laughs> oh, man. This is... I don't think I'm supposed to be here yet. I think I'm supposed to, like, <laughs> do everything else first. And then do the escape thing. Uh, <clears throat> Cargo lift. The second version of is functionality. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> I misread, like, most of that. The second version is functionally the same as what what's in the final game. But we wanted it to look more like a place where cargo was actually stored. The cargo lift. The cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the operation... Or, sorry, again. I swear I can read, okay. <laughs> I promise you. We also wanted the option of... <clears throat> The player falling to their death. <clears throat> like, where do I... Where do I go? Game design mock-up. <clears throat> like, should I even... It's like an entire museum of just the game. Uh. <clears throat> Freedom ending. Wow.
I thought I would be able to uh, press it, but nope. Yeah, I'm just uh, more confused about everything. <laughs> um, this is not a boss's office. Screens from the development of the boss's office. I mean, this look. This one obviously looks the best, but you know, you know, it's neither here nor there, or whatever. This is so weird. I I just. <laughs> the top of the facility to end this injustice. Now look closely, Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of poor level design, textbook mistake. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively we have even the most fundamental understanding of good and bad in this about They're throwing a surprise party. Well, you know, you're probably going to spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy on you. Okay. Kevin Bright finally Brighting the number nine. The voice of the narrator recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times. I don't know. Well in that case, I'll tell you what, you win. Congratulations. You did it. I know you put in a lot of hard work and it really paid off, so Good job. Hmm. What do we do now? I don't... Stanley, where are you right now? Where, where am I? I'm, I'm trying to figure out, but I, I can't... Stanley, who am I? Can you speak to me? Please talk. Have we done this before? Have we been in this room before? How many times have we done this? How many times have I said these exact words? Say something. Anything. Anything. Help, Help me, Stanley. I don't know who I... What I... I Stan... Where Stan were Help. all of his co-workers? Oh, I don't know. How about... They're throwing a surprise party for him, for all his button pushing. Does that sound plausible to you? That was very interesting. Uh... <laughs> so I'm not talking and a lot, finally, but that... he pushed the number nine. Stanley stood on the roof. That was weird. Um... <clears throat> So maybe even the narrator is like, I don't know, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm completely lost here. But it seems like the, um, <clears throat> it seems like even he is being controlled by the game itself, or something. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going in circles. Where's that map? I saw... Oh. War Zone. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. <laughs> the action game would become sentient. It would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Oh, and this isn't? This isn't too on the nose for the game? <laughs> Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. <clears throat> Oh, Ultra Deluxe and I'm, uh, this is the this is the game that I'm playing. Ultra Deluxe. Which is like a you know I guess an updated version of it. Uh, in December 2018, we announced the Ultra Deluxe version of the Stanley Parable at the Game Awards. These are screenshots <clears throat> of the videos we made for the announcements uh the announcement and the game's delay. It's literally the game that I'm playing. It's that specific version, so. The lounge. 
Okay, this is a... Uh, what? From art. Regarding your game... Oh. Dear narrator, will the Stanley Parable have infinite quests? How many endings? The Stanley Parable is really going to... <sighs> okay. How do you... <laughs> Some questions. How do you make a JRPG? How do you make the worst game ever? What is it? I... How is the game going? <laughs> I hope it's a, I hope it's as good or better than the first one. From a cool man. Are you a rock? <laughs> what? Never read our emails. Could you tell me what the significance of the number 1112800 is? <clears throat> oh, I should probably... What would you do if Stanley entered any other rooms? <clears throat> Narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent out, uh, <clears throat> we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these for their promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. <clears throat> Dead strong bad. How do you type with boxing gloves on? Ben. <laughs> what do the lights in the control room do? I really want to know Montgomery Jones. <laughs> That's a great name. So are these actually real? Or are they just for the game? Hi, Mr. Narrator Guy. I have a question for you, sir, and it is, what is your message for the day? There's a skeleton inside of you. There are more skeletons in this world than humans. Cool. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> My God! Well, the game feature capybaras. <laughs> it should. All right. I don't think I'm gonna get that one again. I was gonna take a picture of that email with the number. What? <laughs> what? Are you gay? From from Dink Dunk. All right. Oh wait, it's it looped around. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of that number with my phone <clears throat> once it comes back up. <clears throat> what is the difference between a wait between a duck? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. I just, I don't. I feel like I probably shouldn't have gotten this ending first. You know? There it is. 112800. I took a picture, so. You know? Just in case if I need it. Because I will not remember that. I've already forgotten it. It's already gone. <clears throat> All right. Where is Stanley's office from left to right? The evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011, the second in March 2012, and the third in February 2013. <clears throat> 
people. All right. Where what do I what do I do? What do I get? Where do I go to get out of here? There's so much. There's so much going on right now. Zending model. Zending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth version of the ending. We thought it was complete. Did the light just dim? Or was that just me? Is the trailer? We ran four major teaser trailers over the over the course of the game's development. <clears throat> Each meant uh, to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one, released in May 2012. It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing the viewers that he is repairing a new version of the Stanley Parable. Okay. It's the maintenance layout. Okay. <clears throat> Can I just like <laughs> leave? Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. <laughs> How they both wish to be free. Can you okay. see? Can you see how much they need one another? No. No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Okay. Um... That was a lot to take in. I don't know. Um, well, that was the meta ending. There you go. Um, All of his co-workers were gone. <clears throat> what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So yeah, that just confused me more. So, uh... I'm not really sure what to think about that. I mean, that other narrator saying that they need each other. I mean, I guess that, you know, that puts some ideas in my head. About, <clears throat> like, the game itself is, like, you know, me controlling Stanley and the narrator having to narrate what's going on. And her saying that the... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
and her saying that um wait what did she say <laughs> i already forgot <clears throat> oh yeah I remembered <laughs> so it was like she was saying that they need each other and um, the only way to truly be free of this game is to just quit at least that would be your choice it would have been completely my choice to quit the game in that instance but I didn't so here I am again Walking the same path. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. To solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside you, take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. Resent co-workers no. for not supporting you, I think it said. I just wanted to read that one. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <clears throat> I'm gonna go type that number. I'm totally typing that number in the keypad. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much no. for Stanley to take. It's not enough too numbers. much for any man to take. He fell it's to his enough. knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs, the guttural retching of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Here on the floor, he lay prone, paralyzed by fear for nearly a full hour. But when at last he began to move about and survey the situation, he found a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could it mean? Uh, yeah, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't do it. Let me start over. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right. When Stanley came to a set uh -oh. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Got to plug in the laptop here. It's dying. Oh, that's why it dimmed. That's why the screen dimmed. All right. I was confused. But that's why. So, I don't know. Maybe you didn't even see that. <laughs> maybe that won't show up in the video, but... It did for me. It... <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Yeah, resent co-workers for not supporting you more. Cool. Alright, this time I'm gonna Coming go down to the stairs. Case, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I do not like the ominous red light. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe... He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? 
Why did oh doors God. close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, mm. these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, oh my God. Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, oh no. an explanation. The his loop. co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. One, one, I may as well one, enjoy two. this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. <laughs> And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I'm still in control. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> Jesus. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But what? on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself. Oh and my god. Dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, <clears throat> for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she well, remembered good for the you. meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions <laughs> of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. 
So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> All right, well, that's, <laughs> that's rude. What? <laughs> I'm even more confused. This game. <laughs> this game is insane. I, I don't, I just, I don't know. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <clears throat> I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to, like... Do? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find <sighs> an answer there. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Sure about that? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an <laughs> empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. I don't trust you. I'm saying it right now. I'm I don't trust the narrator. I don't trust anything. That Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally <laughs> just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> it's better than going out there. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> I don't have to explain nothing. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. <laughs> it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely <laughs> no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> then why is it here? Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branch <clears throat> of the path. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> I find this whole thing concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how oh stupid my God. he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> uh, that's a compliment. If I ever I did hear well, it. I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. <laughs> they have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove <laughs> their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> Well, you're, there you go. That's the uh, 
the broom closet ending. XD. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too. <laughs> I knew it. Mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish, fungus. Look, <laughs> you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. Oh my god. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Let's do it again. Okay. That was awesome. Totally worth it. I don't even care. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I guess I'll just go up then. I've got the feeling money's for stealing but not yours of course say that's a lovely purse okay who <laughs> who wrote that are those like lyrics for something I don't know <clears throat> All right, well, that was weird. What the? Oh my god! What? <laughs> Business strategy? It's a picture of a pen or panda with a guy. Pulling a gun to its head. I... D <laughs> All right. All I can say is... Can I have a copy? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't want that. Um... Let me try going up. I mean, I would be saying something right now, but I just, I don't know what to say, honestly. I'm just, I'm completely speechless on this, <laughs> on this game so far. I don't know, like... Stanley or the narrator humming this? Is this a trick? Wait. Oh my god. I knew it. It was a trick the whole time. There was just waiting for you to... To push the button again. Can I just go down? It's... This game, oh my god. It's just a trick. This elevator's not going anywhere. What an idiot. <laughs> that was insane. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean, he wondered. Desperate for answers, 
he began turning the room over looking for clues that might unravel the situation until at last he discovered a keypad behind the boss's desk but alas no code for this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number two eight four five but of course Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. <coughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I want to see what he says if I turn back. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Right, but of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? <clears throat> Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? was the proof the heart of the operation controls labeled with emotions happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life for he would dismantle the controls once and for all.
Are these buttons? <clears throat> do these buttons have something to do with it? the four. Is that up there? Am I supposed to get up there? I literally can't see <laughs> in this game. It looks like there's a button up there. This is blocked off. I don't know. I, uh... Okay, never mind. I guess I'm not supposed to do that. I just, I don't know. I thought the buttons are numbered, so I pressed them all. Alright, never mind then. I guess that was a waste of time. I don't know. Maybe there's a secret going on there, but I have no idea. Let's just uh, continue on. And when see what happens if you put on. Source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, <laughs> you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, <laughs> and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Oh Mere my moments God. until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them, I turned off the machine, I said, Oh you my free. god, 
Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it... Okay, that's... That's exactly what the other narrator said, that they hate each other. Stanley and this narrator, I guess. Even though Stanley doesn't really have any knowledge of what's going on, I don't know. It doesn't have any memory of who this narrator is, so I don't know why he would hate him, but... But that's what the other one said, that... <clears throat> the narrator hates him. That's like, well... I simply that, let you maybe sit there in a... your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go, but I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. Okay, so now I have to do the buttons. My goodness, only 34 seconds left, but I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock, why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, <laughs> clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? Won? Solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> oh my Stanley, god. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a lot to unpack there. Um... <laughs> Okay, okay, well now what? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't <clears throat> find a trace of his co-workers. Alright, so the narrator is, uh... A lot crazier than I thought. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office because he doesn't call me out cues from his environment. Listen, all right, I do pick up cues, okay? I just I didn't know that I can open doors before, but then I started opening them. So now I'm just checking every door. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <coughs> Wow, 
Yes, this room. What a beautiful oh. room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room <laughs> was now too horrible even to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Do that next time. There's a thing over and here that I want to do. through the maintenance section, walk straight ahead to the opposite door, and go back on track. I want to know what's going on here. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh da, 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 da. <laughs> from here, it's, um, left. Oh, no. No, it's to the right, my mistake. <laughs> my God. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? <laughs> He's like changing the game Let's as I'm playing see. it. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, okay, okay, yes. Oh my god, this... <laughs> He's just a DM. Or a GM, or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Dungeon master, game master, whatever. I've got it now. Just scrambling through papers, like, uh, where are you in the <laughs> in the dungeon? I gotta. Absolutely, definitely this way. Wow. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely <laughs> unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I mean, I just, I don't even know. When Stanley, wait. Uh oh. Wait, what? No, oh no. No, I restarted. I swear I definitely restarted the game over. Completely uh -oh. fresh. Everything should be Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or uh... hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. <laughs> it was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Oh no. And now we're truly in the back rooms here. <clears throat> Inner guilt. Everyone knows what you did. They're just holding back to let you torture yourself. Oh, that's not ominous I'll at all. Say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just, do we need to restart the game again? <clears throat> well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> oh no, I broke the game. <laughs> I can't believe it. 
all of his co-workers were gone, what could it mean? <laughs> Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This is pretty great. Hang on. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to go do something there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, so I've broken the game now, so I don't, uh, very confused. Oh, I can't even examine the doors anymore. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way <laughs> and retrace our steps. <laughs> this is insane. I don't even know. Okay. Uh. Now this... Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! <laughs> Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he added a freaking. All right, I've got a solution. Here. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Hey, look at that. This door was not open before. Mm. Do I disobey him now or whatever. I'll just follow the line. I don't even I don't even know, man. You know what? I want to see what happens. No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. Okay. Well, he just... <laughs> yeah, he just gives up. <clears throat> like, nah. I guess I'm going back then. See, so, yeah, th these doors were not open. Or this one was, but like, you know. This one was not. So I could see that that area back there, but I couldn't reach it until now. <clears throat> this you game see? is a trip. The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. 
Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? <laughs> I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> What? <laughs> Why? Oh, we're going down. We're almost to the, the uh, number one office. Oh. All right. Well, never mind then. Music is insane. I don't know. Wait. Cut the music. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I gotta just say I'm I'm speechless. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to think here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Wait, what? We're back at the office. Oh my no. god! No, no line. You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? <clears throat> the story. Is any of this ringing a bell? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after <laughs> everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. <laughs> this is insane. I don't even know, like... <clears throat> You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, <laughs> daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? <clears throat> Sorry, just <laughs> it's drinking water. <clears throat> now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go okay, on. now we're just going in circles. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Are you serious right now? <laughs> This game is a trip. Alright, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh no, not you again. Stanley. Oh my I'd god. I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. 
Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. Wow, that's insane. It literally broke through here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that. The line goes up that way and then comes back this way and then goes back that way. Am I supposed to get up there? <laughs> I can't jump in this Ah, now. a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay. So I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, <laughs> there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? <laughs> and since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Uh, Our uh, destiny awaits. The confused... What? <laughs> um... <laughs> the confusion ending... Hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? <laughs> that's really how all this goes? It's all determined? Oh my god. So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? The eighth, after the eighth time, the narrator forgets. The narrator is just gone, and Stanley dies. Mine goes blank simply because it's written here on this this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer stopped. Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever yeah. it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... What? Oh no. <laughs> was that it? Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. That was different though. He's saying something different. <laughs> new content oh new content what does that mean new content I think you know exactly what it means
Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Uh... Okay. Okay, so far it's an elevator. <clears throat> Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. It's gonna be nothing. Um, is it broken? <laughs> What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the <laughs> new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. This is going to lead to nothing. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if, um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it. It's like it's gonna be nothing. And this is this is it. This is this is technically new content. I couldn't jump before, now I can jump. But only in this circle. <laughs> this is so stupid. But I respect it. Wow, I can't jump anymore. <laughs> I can't. Oh no. Literally only can do it. Is, is that it? That many times. Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say... Initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? <laughs> if this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable <laughs> Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for <laughs> no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department <laughs> signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. <laughs> just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend?
Wow. That does remind me of the... Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, well, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> that reminds me of uh, <clears throat> the game Lisa the Painful RPG, which is a great game. Uh, <clears throat> they had a DLC. It's not like a, it's not actually a sequel. It's a DLC um, expansion, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't. It's not, like, long enough to be specifically, like, a full game, but it is more to the story. Like, it's, uh, you're playing as a different character, and it's, like, taking place after the events of the painful, um, after the events of that story. So it is, the you know, continuing the story with a new character, with a different character it's one of the characters in the game uh in the story specifically but <clears throat> um <clears throat> they had a th they had a thing where uh <clears throat> people really wanted them to make an easy mode in that one it was called Lisa the Joyful RPG. That was a... <clears throat> it's not like a full-on sequel, but it's like, you know... It finishes off the story with the, one of the other characters. That's what it, what I was trying to say. But anyway, um, <clears throat> people were really trying to... Uh, they were really... Like, begging for an easy mode because that game it could get pretty hard so what the creator did the the guy who made the game he did uh <laughs> he did make an easy mode and it was like the most trolly-ish troll trollish easy mode ever you just like there's a guy who gives you the ultimate weapon, which is just like a bat or something. It was like a toy bat. And it's like, all right, now fight this guy. And you go over and you fight him. And he just, he, <laughs> it just takes one hit and you beat him. And then he's like, yep, you did it. You won the game. Congratulations. And then the, the credits roll like it's like, like it was a huge troll i was like there you go there that's your easy mode it was funny <clears throat> but that's why it this kind of reminded me of that it's like here's the new content and it's just a jump circle <laughs> it's like all right <clears throat> but now it looks like there's more Anyway, so. I don't know. Hopefully I didn't uh, skip any other endings I could have gotten. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. What? I call it the Memory Zone. 
It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> you see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. I mean, this would be cool, but like... <laughs> I didn't really get on the Star the Stanley Parable hype train back then. I didn't I just never played it, so Well, I'm sure this is a uh, kind of nostalgic for people, I don't know. That's pretty funny. I got the <laughs> Steam page framed. Uh, is that like, that's like military time, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm really bad with that. <clears throat> so I don't know what time that is. I wonder if it's, no, I don't know. I don't think it is. Uh, I was going to say maybe it's the time that I entered in at the beginning of the game, but I don't think so. Good times. Smile because it happened. What? <laughs> what? Are... What is it doing here? What are you doing here, George? Oh my god. <laughs> Is there achievements? British Academy Award nominee. British Academy of Film and Television Arts. I guess it is specifically the game games awards. I mean, you know, that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh my god. Creators surprisingly down to earth. I got that ending. Je suis dans la memory zone. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. <laughs> and now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a no. husk, Maho. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. It's funny that he uh, mentioned Persona 3 because... Uh, 
I'm actually currently playing through that. Uh, the Reload. Uh, Persona 3 Reload. The remake. It's pretty good. So far. I didn't beat it, but, you know. What is down here? Person of the year. Okay. Are these like figures of the game, but there's only two people? <laughs> Only two physical characters that have showed up so far, so. <clears throat> Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Repeatable ca carpet textures. <laughs> Ready for your game project. Six royalty free designs. Gray, red, uh, missing co worker scenario, meeting, boring, grass trial version. Wow. <clears throat> okay. The serious room. Can I not go in there? Uh All right. <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. The magazine is called The Tasteful Nostalgic. It was good. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. Uh -oh. What's this? What's down here? Oh no. Oh no. Oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> uh oh. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his <laughs> humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! Uh. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I mean, this one's positive. I can't read it, but... Ooh. The most horrific thing imaginable. The bad <laughs> Steam reviews. This really is a horror game. Mm. 
Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. <clears throat> What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations <laughs> of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story and the choices are what <laughs> have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, <laughs> it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait. How do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else? Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 oh hours! Oh my god! You've just been frozen there! 
Oh my I don't god. know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my god, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times, and there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button, and if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it, and I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. Or well, two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time that if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I'm too scared to push the I button again. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us, and I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. <laughs> to begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months, I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust. Simultaneously, I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without This is horrifying, by the way, this is It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment. And I felt... Uh-oh. Is he breathing? Is that him? This is, 
This is scary. I don't know. Uh, What's that beeping? <clears throat> but they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he went, shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find... End is never the end, 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 is never the Uh oh. Oh no. Fully get in here. Listen, I never asked for a skip button. The narrator, are you still there? He just refuses to talk to me. Why? Why do things have to be so creepy?
What is that? I guess we can't press the button anymore. Whoa. I skipped time way too long. Come back. So yeah, is the narrator just dead? I doubt it. Like, he's the narrator. He can't die. <laughs> wow. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. <clears throat> All right, well, uh, for right now, uh, I think that'll be it for <laughs> this. Uh, I think I'll do another part. That'll be it for part one. I've been going for a while. I just, I, <laughs> I'm sure there's, I guess, more to the game than that, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see. So, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'll just, I'll see you in the next one, I guess. We'll see if we can try and figure this out if there is going to be another part or not i i don't know i just don't know